Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to get started using a VPN on a Mac. Now I'm going to be using NordVPN for this demonstration, but it doesn't make a difference which VPN you're using. The steps should be pretty much the same. Now, the first step, if you don't already have a VPN, is going to be to go to their website, make an account, and download the VPN that you're choosing. For NordVPN and for all the VPNs I'm going to mention in this video, you'll find a discount link in the description that will actually save you some extra money if you want to try out one of those. But with Nord, we would just go over to the Downloads tab right here on the left side scroll down and you can find all the different devices you can download Nord on. Right there we would see a Mac and you would just download it, go through the installation and setup process and you'll have something like this right here. The home page actually looks like this, pretty much like a dashboard of all the different features that Nord comes with and we'll get into those in a second. The actual VPN is right here, the second option. Now I'm not going to go into a Nord tutorial, uh, that could be a different video, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. So I'm going to try to keep things general to all VPNs, right? With Nord and some other VPNs, you'll have a map interface, you can just click on one of these options and that will connect you to a server. You also have those countries in a list on the left side right here. And a lot of VPNs will also have that as well. When you click on one of these countries or one of these little nodes here and connect to it, that's going to connect up your computer to that location. And even though you physically may be somewhere else in the world, any website or application you use, anything you do on the internet is going to think that you're located in the location that you're connected to in the VPN. So for example, right here in Nord, I'm connected up to Greece. And you can actually double check this by going over to any IP finder website. Here is show my IP and just refreshing the page. And right there, it says that my country is Greece and the IP address matches the one in NordVPN. So this website now thinks that I'm in Greece and the same would go for any website that I visited. So if I went to Netflix now, I'd be able to access the Netflix content library that would be available in Greece. And that's the basics of using a VPN, picking a location and connecting up to it. And not only will every website on the internet think that you're in Greece, but anything that you send to that website will be protected and secured and made anonymous by the VPN. And this is where having a really good VPN like Nord or some of the other ones I recommend like ExpressVPN or Surfshark is very important because these VPNs have invested a lot in making sure that your data is protected and anonymous. They've all done third party audits, which means that outside companies have come in and verified that they really are secure, that there's no records being kept of anything that you do online. So nobody not the government or your internet service provider or even these VPNs themselves are going to be able to access anything that you do online or any of your personal information. Now, a few other things that are important to cover are going to be specialty servers. You'll find this in a lot of VPNs. These are going to be different servers that will have a specific goal. So with double VPN, for example, you'll be connected up to two different VPN servers before getting you over to the internet, giving you an added layer of protection. Obfuscated servers are gonna be special servers that are gonna hide the fact that you're even using a VPN. And these are just some examples. You'll find more about these in the Nord tutorial that I'll link in the description. A lot of VPNs will have add-ons so with Nord, you have Threat Protection Pro, which is a highly rated antivirus, sort of like a mini antivirus, but it's been tested and actually does a really good job. And many VPNs will have their own bundle of add-ons. So you'll want to do some research and see if you're interested in these and which add-ons offered by different VPNs you might want or find useful. So in the settings, moving on we have a few different things here. First, we're gonna have something called the protocol. And you'll find that in Nord by clicking on the connection option and going right there at the top VPN protocol, you'll have a few different things here. You'll have Nord links, OpenVPN, TCP, and UDP, and then the auto. So a protocol, if you don't know, is basically the thing that will connect you up from your computer to the VPN and create that secure connection that I was talking about. And one of the main things that the protocol affects is your speed when you're using the VPN. So with NordVPN, you're generally gonna wanna go with Nord Links. In a lot of other VPNs, the one you'll wanna go with is called WireGuard. Nord Links is actually a version of WireGuard. And if you're gonna go with ExpressVPN, then the option you wanna choose is going to be called Lightway. And there it is right there. 
So that is going to be the fastest protocol for these VPNs. A lot of times you may need to rely on OpenVPN because that is an older and more widespread VPN protocol that has a lot of other features built in. It's not as simple as WireGuard. WireGuard is kind of like the simpler version. So there may at times be a need to switch over to OpenVPN. And that's why I generally just tell people if you're new, just click on auto. That'll pick the best one for you automatically and you don't have to worry about it. So that's all for protocols. Another feature that I wanted to talk to you about was kill switch. This is something that you want to have active if you're using an unsafe or not really secure internet network like public Wi-Fi or maybe airport Wi-Fi, something like that. Then what the kill switch will do is automatically disconnect your internet connection if the VPN ever stops working. So that'll make sure that whenever you're connected to the internet, you're also using the VPN at the same time. And there's never going to be any gap in that connection where you're just on the open network, the open internet, and you could be vulnerable to hackers or different data breaches and the VPN won't be connected. So having the kill switch enabled if you're going to be on a public network is a very good idea. Another feature that you'll find in most VPNs is called split tunneling. And this allows you to choose exactly which app the VPN will be connected to. So there might be times where you only want the VPN connected to your browser, but not some other application you have running. And you can do that with split tunneling. You can choose if you want the VPN to be disabled for certain apps or only enabled for certain apps. So you can do that with split tunneling. And this is a feature that a lot of people don't know about, but if you're in a situation where you only want one specific thing using the VPN, this is the solution right here for you. And that's the basics of using a VPN. NordVPN happens to be one of the most feature packed VPNs. So if you're following along in this video and you understood everything I said, then you shouldn't have any problem with any other VPN out there. So for example, ExpressVPN, this is personally my favorite VPN and the one that I use the most. It is very simple and easy to use, especially when compared with a VPN like Nord. And if maybe you felt that Nord was a little bit overwhelming, there was a lot going on, then ExpressVPN is definitely the option to go with, in my opinion. I love this VPN. It's super fast and just gets the job done without a lot of the bells and whistles that comes with the Nord. That's not to say it doesn't have features. It definitely does have a lot of them, but the interface is just very clean. And personally, that's part of what I like about it so much. Now, if you're on a budget, there's always the last option that I showed over here, which is Surfshark. It doesn't have as many features as NordVPN, and it's not as easy to use and intuitive as Express, but it is the cheapest of the three. The premium plan for Surfshark is going to be cheaper than the basic plan for most other VPNs. And for what you're paying, you're really getting a very solid VPN. It's also very secure, fast. It uses that WireGuard protocol I mentioned before, and you do get a decent amount of features. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but all three of these VPNs will have a hundred plus countries that you can connect to around the world. So if that was something that you're worried about, all three of these have you covered. You're going to have a lot of different options for where you can connect to. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope this got you set up and you kind of gotten your bearings about how to use a VPN on a Mac. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you want full reviews or if you want a discount link to try out any of these VPNs, you'll find that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.